So I actually have my math final tomorrow. So oh, well, I what I'm planning on actually uh, uploading it this tomorrow, so it goes up on my when I'm probably taking the math exam. So uh, so actually, yeah, today is my math exam. So I'm gonna do a math problem today. So the problem is an integral from zero to two with the square root of four minus t squared. I'm gonna try my best to do this in geometry dash. Okay, so to do this, we are going to use a trigonometric, a trigonometric substitution. We're gonna make x equal to sine theta. I'm not, I'm not sure if you can put, fuck it, it doesn't have to be theta. Make it u, sine of u. I, so therefore, we can make, I just realized I'm not using x, so that would, uh, t, t, it, we're, we're using t now, okay. So that would make dt equal to cosine of u du. So now we can use these and then substitute it with what we have here. We would get, this is gonna be so jank, oh my god. So this, <clears throat> will become <clears throat> 4 minus 4 sine squared of u. And you can factor this out to be 4, <clears throat> four 1 minus sine squared paired of u, which can, which will translate to cosine squared. <clears throat> And then, and then, and then, we replace du with 2 cosine of u. 2 cosine u. And I need to put the du. The du is important. All right. And then we can, uh, <clears throat> then we can simplify the inside down of the inside of the uh, radical here. That will become two, ah, that should become two cosine u, two cosine u. Um, and then we're going to multiply it with this, which should give us back uh, four cosine squared of u. And now we're going to integrate this instead of this. <clears throat> Get your ass here. The hitbox for text boxes are so weird. Anyway, we can, what we can do to make this our lives a little simpler, we can move for outside the integral because it is a constant. And now all we have to do is integrate cosine squared. Now, cosine squared, uh, we can break this down into a more integratable uh, function by making it one half plus a cosine of two u over two. <clears throat> so now we're going to replace this and integrate this across with respect to you and then once you do that you should get something like you halves and then this one will be a sine of 2u over 4 here to du and now all you have to do is replace the u with our original variable t now we can see we made t equal to 2 of sine u so therefore sine of u is going to equal to t over 2. <clears throat> we can then make uh, blah, 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 blah. You can make, well, actually, no, I don't think you, actually, I, okay, yeah, for this one, I don't think you need to do anything like a triangle. But uh, yeah, we're going to then replace u here with inverse sine. So, 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 so. Um, <clears throat> I 
inverse sine, inverse sine. So uh, yeah, you, uh, uh, this should be inverse sine of t halves. I can represent that like this. There we go, inverse sine of t halves. And then this one would also be sine of inverse sine of t halves over four. <clears throat> sine of two inverse sine. I guess I can say arc sine. That's probably that's probably gonna be way better. Yeah, arc sine. I think this is arc sine of t halves. This is getting so messy. And uh, before I forget, all of this is going to be multiplied by four. By the way, so we can simplify the, I forgot to write the root half here, but this should become two instead. And this one should just get rid of its, it's a denominator here. And these are all being added together, okay. This is really, this is a bad idea. Do not do your math in geometry dash. Okay, and now we just need to compute it for across these values. So two of sine, of inverse sine of t halves. That is, once you plug in uh, two for t, you should get inverse sine of one, in which case so inverse sine of one should be pi halves, pi over two, which should just become pi. And then if we do that same thing for this, <clears throat> We know that arc si two arc sine is going to give us pi, and sine of pi is zero. Zero. And then we're going to subtract this by the same thing, but we're gonna plug in zero, which if you know anything about sine, <clears throat> if you know anything about sine, inverse sine of zero is going to be zero and sine of zero is also zero, so we don't really have to worry about it. So our final answer should be pi, and that is how you solve this problem. I have the answer with me, and it says it's pi. So yeah, I am very smart, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna just get rid of that. I don't know why I still have that there. Anyway, see ya.